The number of people killed in an attack at a mosque in northwestern Pakistan has risen to at least 101. Recovery operations have now ended, but it's feared the death toll may still rise, as many are in hospital in a critical condition. The suicide bombing took place in a highly fortified security compound in Peshawar. An attacker blew himself up during afternoon prayers. The Pakistani Taliban have now denied involvement after initially claiming the attack. Well, for more on this, I'm joined by Arise International correspondent Faith Orr. Good to see you, Faith. So the day after an attack that has stunned Pakistan and now today a day of mourning and burials. What's the latest? We are seeing quite a few funerals taking place. We know at least 20 of the officers who were killed yesterday have been buried now. And these are security officers, policemen from all over the country. So actually the fact that the mass funerals are being held in Peshawar, you know, instead of them travelling home to their home provinces, the security forces are trying to get a sense of unity out of all of this. It was predominantly security forces, police officers, army members, bomb disposal units who were targeted in this. And that's, you know, part of the questions is being asked is because the mosque that was targeted is one of the most secure areas in, in the region. Um, there were three to four hundred officers there. And there are lots of questions today, particularly in you know, an investigation has been launched about how this could have happened. Mm, absolutely. And, and are the authorities any clearer now about who carried out the attack? Because, I mean, there appears to be some confusion there. There does. I mean, we did see an initial statement from the Pakistani Taliban claiming responsibility for this attack. And they said that it was in retribution for, by, um, for the brother of the leader being killed by the security forces. Now, that statement has since been withdrawn. They said, no, we didn't carry out the attack. Many people aren't buying that. And that's because the Pakistani Taliban routinely deny any links to attacks on places like mosques, schools, that sort of thing, because they want to be viewed as having a war with the police, not a war with civilians. And of course, when you see this death Toll, this huge amount of casualties, you know, as well as 101 dead, 225 wounded, and they just don't want to be seen to be responsible for that sort of thing. But many still believe that they were behind this. Of course, the police still to make their own calculation on that one way or the other. Absolutely. And uh, you mentioned the, the fact that uh, a lot of questions about security, looking at the pictures and the amount of security in that area right now, does that make it even more surprising that someone was able to get inside the building and get as close to that explosion as possible? It does. There's lots and lots of questions, but you know, this was a suicide bomber. They were wearing a, a vest, an mm. explosive vest. How did they get past all of that security, the layers and layers? You know, this was inside a compound. I mean, today, journalists can't get past the gates, you know, but someone wearing an explosive vest did manage that. Um, I think it also speaks to, I hesitate to use the word skill, but certainly the determination mm. of the attacker. You know, this is the, these attacks have been ramping up. If, say, for instance, it was the Pakistani Taliban, they have been ramping up attacks against the security forces since November when a truce ended and I think you know they are seeing there was intelligence around a month ago that there would be more attacks in the Peshawar area and it's surprising that with the amount of security there was there that they didn't manage to stop this attacker mm. of course we don't hear about the numerous attacks that they do manage to stop so maybe this is a case that one just slipped mm. through the net and, and do we know I mean we, we don't know for sure who carried out the attack but do we know anything about the bomber I understand they've been collecting lots of evidence Yes, they, they have indeed. I mean, we know that it was, you know, there wasn't a group of them. There was the one person. Mm. Um, he carried out the attack after afternoon, during afternoon prayers when they knew that the place would be full, would be busy. You know, we, we believe, well, we don't believe, or I doesn't believe, but security forces are thinking because of the initial claim that it probably is the Pakistani Taliban. Now, this is a war that they have been waging for about 15 years. Mm. Essentially, what they're trying to do is what the Taliban in Afghanistan managed to do, which is, is take over Pakistan. You know, they managed to take over Afghanistan. And although the two groups are close allies, they're not actually, they are separate groups. They're not the same institution. So we do know that these things 
have been ramping up, and we do know that this attacker targeted, you know, worked on his own in the moment and targeted a high traffic area with a huge amount of security officers and police there, and those were the intended victims. Mm. And Pakistan, of course, a country facing multiple challenges, those terrible floods, a profound economic and financial crisis and a high stakes political crisis with national elections looming. And in the middle of all that, the country now reeling from the suicide attack. How much does all this raise big questions about Pakistan's ability to confront a long standing military threat? or militant threat, let me put it. I, I think it raises lots of questions. I mean, they are fighting so many fronts here. You know, you mentioned the floods. Those have been devastating. Some of the worst that they've seen in their history. We've also seen a political crisis just in the past few months. Former Prime Minister Imran Khan was shot. You know, he claimed it was an attempted assassination mm. by the new Prime Minister. So while they're dealing with the militant threat, they're also dealing with you know, in fighting in politics, the uh, members of the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, are actually in the country today to discuss trying to help Pakistan out of the huge economic crisis that it finds itself in. And of course, if you can't fund a, a fight against militants, that makes it extremely difficult to tackle them. And Pakistan really is struggling economically. Faith, thank you very much indeed. Faith or Arise International Correspondent.